If you're here, it's because you're learning about Edpuzzle. Today we're going to show you how to log in and watch an Edpuzzle video. To do that, you go all the way down to where you see this link. It has the Edpuzzle logo and it says click here. Once you do that, it's going to open up a brand new page. That page will say, you found an open class. And it says, just enter a nickname and click on the button to join your open class. You'll know that it's the correct page because it will say Smoketown 4th Grade 2020. It will also have Mr. Panza's name and our class code. All you need to do is type in your first name and your last name. I know it says nickname but your teachers won't know specific nicknames, so please make sure that you are typing in your first name and your last name. To do this, I'm going to put in my daughter's name, Leah, then a space, and her last name, Panza. Then click Join Open Class. After you've done that, it's going to take us inside our virtual video classroom. You'll know you're in the right classroom again because at the top left, it will say Smoketown 4th Grade 2020, and on the right, it says your class code. These codes aren't a big deal because it's an open classroom in which you can continue to enter and exit as you take video lessons. You'll notice that there is an assignment due. You'll know that it has a due date because it actually says a due date assignment and it tells me that the date is tomorrow. So all I have to do at this point is click on the video, watch it, and answer questions. Now that you've successfully logged into the Smoketown 4th Grade Edpuzzle page, it's time to show what you know. You do that by clicking on any assigned assessments. In this case, it's just a video with questions or notes. So when I'm logged into the page, all I have to do is click on the video. When I click on the video, it's going to send me to the page where the video is that I must watch. You must either start the video by pressing this red play button here, you can pause the video by clicking on that same spot or by pressing the play button here. When I watch the video, I must listen carefully because there may be questions anywhere that you see a little teardrop. If it's YouTube videos. Um... So you can hear the teacher talking, plus then the teacher has made a specific note for you to listen to. I can't move on or watch any more of the video until I listen to this note or in other cases answer a question. So to listen to any note that a teacher implements in an Ed Puzzle, just press this play button and listen to what the teacher had to say in the note. There's also an option where you can stop the video and not only insert questions, but you can also interject audio notes. For example, this program doesn't have to be used with just YouTube. It can also be used with videos that you upload from your own computer. So in this case, if I maybe thought that I didn't get enough out of it, I could re-listen to that or just continue with the video and again continue to see what else this teacher needs me to do. Sometimes you're just wanting kids to get some information, but sometimes you really are now in this case, you may be tempted, because maybe you're bored, to try and skip ahead to the question. But I want you to see if you do that, it's locked and it will not let you skip ahead. When I press it, you'll notice it says locked and it will not let me skip to the question. I have to actually watch the whole video. So one of the things you can use is a small little program called Edpuzzle. Now you can see the teacher wants me to answer this question. It says Edpuzzle can only be used with YouTube. And for teachers out there, this is a false statement. You don't just have to use YouTube, you can use many other videos. When you're done answering a question, just click submit and then the video will continue. And this is actually where my Edpuzzle is and you can see you can assign assignments and all that to it. I also want you to see that if you happen to have other tabs open in the top and maybe go to those open tabs, it's not going to allow the video to continue to play. So let's say, for example, you were watching another YouTube video or just listening to music in YouTube and wanted to go that page instead, it's actually going to pause what the teacher is saying. 
For example, if I'm listening to my teacher here and I click off of the Edpuzzle link to watch another video, you can see that the Edpuzzle video has actually stopped. And because of that, I'm not actually completing the assignment. So I've got to go back to the Edpuzzle video so that I can continue to take the quiz. As soon as you do that, the video starts back up again. It also requires students to have to slow down and not be able to fast forward through. Here's an open-ended question. It's still a question, but now I can actually type into this box. It says, could you see using this tool with your classroom? Because I'm definitely going to use this tool, I'm going to say yes. Now, you could answer yes or no, but you may want to apply a little bit more of a complete sentence. I will use this in my classroom. And then click Submit. After you click Submit, you'll be prompted to press Continue or Rewatch. If you're ready to continue, press Continue. If we want to rewatch a section, click Rewatch. Fast forward through video, and they cannot progress past where the questions are. On the teacher end of the program, you're able to monitor how far students are in the video, their replies or responses to the questions you've asked, and kind of monitor them as they are going through the lesson. So in this case, he has one final note. I hope this video shows that you can make students a bit more accountable for watching videos, which we hope we're able to do during our time where we are learning from home. To finish and wrap up this video, I hit continue. The video is done. I can rewatch the video. I wanted to provide one final note. After you've logged in and you've typed up your name and you've watched the video to completion, you're done. Let's say you stopped in the middle of the video and you log out, it doesn't save your work. So be sure to make sure that when you log in, you watch the video from start to finish and answer all of the questions. But that's it. That's how you log into Edpuzzle and take a quiz or assessment.